Welcome to this ChemSpider video tutorial on searching. There are three ways to search for a compound in ChemSpider. Doing a simple search using a text term, so a synonym, a name, a systematic name, or even perhaps a database reg registry number. The second form of search that you can perform is a structure search. And thirdly, we have an advanced search which allows you to generate complex searches with lots of different queries. This video will focus on simple searches using text terms uh, and finish off looking at some of the problems that you can sometimes encounter when performing a search on ChemSpider. From the ChemSpider homepage there are three different ways to start performing a search. You can use the search box at the top of the page there's also the search menu from which you can get to several different types of search and wherever you are on the ChemSpider site you can start a search by using the search box in the menu bar. If I start by going to the search menu and clicking on simple search we come to a page that is just a simple search page and if you begin to type a name after a few letters you'll notice that ChemSpider then tries to provide suggestions of compounds that you might be trying to type. If I pick the name 1,3-dimethylbenzene from the suggestions, I then return the record for this compound, which I can see is also called metaxylene. Using the search menu to get to the search page again, uh, I can start typing in a trivial name, such as Taxol, and if I press return, I get to the record for Taxol. You don't just have to use names, but you can also use data space registry numbers. So for instance, if I type in this registry number and press search, I find out that this number relates to chloroform. If you are familiar with inches, inch keys, or smile strings, you can also use these as an input for your search. So if I paste in this inchy and then press search, I find out that this is the inchy for caffeine. If you input a search term that doesn't match anything that's already in ChemSpider, the system will look for similar names in ChemSpider. If there are no matches, the system will try and break your input term down into smaller terms that it does know. So for instance, if I put in potassium chlorogallate, this synonym is not already known in the system and actually we return lots and lots of different hits, all of which we can see quite clearly are not potassium chlorogallate. However, if we go back to the top of the record, we see a message that tells us that our search term could not be found as it was entered and so it's been broken down into separate parts. So what ChemSpot has done is it searched for potassium and chlorogallate. In such cases, it may be that we do have a record for this compound, we just don't have this particular synonym in the database. So it's always worth trying to search using a different synonym, the same compound, or trying to perform a different kind of search. Sometimes when performing a search in ChemSpider, when you expect to get only one result, you may find that you actually get several results returned. For example, if I perform a search for diacemin, I expect only one record to be returned, but I get a list of four. Looking over the results, we can start to understand some of the reasons why we've got four records. So some of the structures have incomplete or undefined stereochemistry which means they're probably not the structures for diacemin. But we have to open the links and actually go into the records and investigate them further to understand if these records are the actual compound that we want. This concludes this video training session. If you have any questions about searching or have any trouble when performing a search, please do contact us by emailing us at chemspider at rsc.org.